Welcome, I'm the Deadwood Jedi. This is another Raid Shadow Legends video, and today we're going to take a look at Green Warden Ruark. This is maybe one of the better clan boss champions out there, but he's still not going to be amazing for you. And that's the lowdown on him. As much as I want to say this guy's awesome, he's not. He just doesn't do enough damage for you. And I think that's actually a pretty consistent theme with this Sylvan faction is the damage is just a little bit underwhelming across the board. And that's a problem, obviously, because clan boss are trying to do as much damage as possible. But he does bring some very useful skills to the table and he might be somebody that fits for your particular clan boss team you're just gonna have to be a little bit careful about you know where you use him uh in order to really maximize his skills i really appreciate you coming by to watch this video and if you enjoy it don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below the notification bell so you don't miss the next one and of course if you enjoyed today's music we have that soundstripe link down below in the pinned comment description of this video along with my code deadwood jedi to save yourself 15 percent and of course if you're looking for account work you can find that on my website deadwoodjedi.com so this is Green Warden Ruark. I mean, he looks amazing. I love, absolutely love the look of him. I think he looks awesome. And if you watch him, every time he takes damage, he puts his shield up to protect, which is pretty cool too. So he's got some very cool animations, but that's not really what we're here for. We're here for the skills. And so let's start like looking at him. The A1, it's a single attack, transfers all debuffs from this champion to the target and heals this champion for 5% five, for 5 of their maxi speed for each debuff transferred. So cool. He's got a little bit of a heal. It's not really a big thing, but 5% of his max HP is fairly significant. Um, and being able to transfer debuffs is always all right. If this skill did more damage, I'd be more psyched about it, but it really just doesn't. His A2 ability is an AoE with a decreased attack all the way around and also steals all continuous heal buffs from each enemy, this effect can't be resisted. So what it's telling you is you don't need accuracy for this champion pretty much at all in order to be able to use this skill, which is great. The decreased accuracy, of course, you do need accuracy for. So if you're gonna bring him in the clan boss, you do wanna bring accuracy if you need that decreased attack debuff. Um, but if you're just looking to steal some buffs, you don't need it. I, I don't understand why you have some skills that need accuracy and some skills that don't to me it seems a little counterintuitive and a little bit of a waste quite frankly my guess would be that in arena maybe you can steal all the continuous heal buffs from champions like with or battle kazar and you're not really interested in landing the debuffs necessarily landing that decrease attack isn't as crucial so maybe then you would just not build the accuracy on him instead put that into his defense or his damage or his sustainability in some way or another I just don't like that combination. But regardless, it is an AoE hit. It does land decrease attack, and that's definitely useful for the clan boss. Now, as A3 places a taunt buff and increased defense buff and a strengthen buff on the champion for two turns. This is great. Now, the taunt, as we've covered, is something that will affect the stun targeting from the clan boss. So that's massive. Increased defense is massive. Strengthen is massive for sustaining through that buff or through that damage from that hit because it is based on HP. So, you know, building up your defense, building up your strength, and those are the only ways to really mitigate that damage. So this is actually a really nice skill and it makes him a very prime clan boss stun target champion. The downside, this is a four turn deep or four turn skill, right? The cooldown is four turns. That makes it a lot harder to bring in a lot of clan boss teams. So it's not gonna be ideal for most teams out there, unfortunately. Still, it is something that we can utilize. Um, his passive ability, whenever an ally loses 10% or more of their max HP from a single hit, places a shield buff on that ally for two turns equals to 10% of their max HP. This is a nice ability. It's definitely going to be more useful in something like Arena than it is for Clan Boss, but, uh, you know, I can see some usage for this. I think where this champion's really going to shine, I should mention he does have an all aura defense battle uh, aura for 30%. It's really good. Um, I think where this champion's actually going to shine the most is going to be in Hydra. Those buffs on himself will help him sustain. The taunt is going to be beneficial. The AoE decrease attack is very nice. And of course, the A1 being able to transfer debuffs can be really helpful there as well. So there's a lot more going on, I think, for Hydra than for anything else. The Plus that shield passive ability is going to be more useful there because it is going to affect more of your allies. There's more likely you're going to actually lose HP. And so that's something that's going to proc more consistently. Is he going to be great? I honestly don't think so. I think this is kind of a little bit lackluster for a legendary champion, especially in this new faction. I'm not saying I'm horribly disappointed because I think he's going to be useful regardless, just not as good as I would have hoped. But I want to bring him in the clan boss. 
and give you guys a chance to see exactly the kind of damage that he does um so you have an understanding of like you know kind of what he's bringing to the table and kind of how to utilize him for clan boss best so if we look at the setup of this team, I'm basically running a slow Hellcat tune, but I've sped up Green Warden Ruark here to 240 speed. That's going to allow him to take a, a four turns for every three the clan boss goes, 4-3 ratio, um, and take his double turn before the stun. Now, this is not an affinity-friendly style build, right? If I wanted to do that, I would need to bring in a Doom Priest, a Cleanser, really, to deal with the stun. Um, and I'd still probably need to bring in somebody to deal with the debuff itself. It's a little bit more difficult. Basically, what I'm going to have to Brogni do is block the debuff for the stun. This is not a perfect build by any stretch of the imagination. But what it is is going to give you a sense of, like, you know, kind of how this works. As far as, like, how I built these guys, you can pause if you want to see the stats on all these champions. But, you know, we have it a traditional clan boss team. These are actually the champions I run for my own clan boss team all the time. It one keys pretty regularly, but I usually run it with um you know a uh, septimus in the lead so we keep those poisons up the full fight because we're bringing Gr uh, green warden we're not actually going to be able to get a full you know debuff bar of poisons up so it's going to limit our damage somewhat what i'm more curious about is the kind of raw damage that he does in the total that he brings at the end personally i think that's going to give us a much better indication of what he can do so I do have it set up to work uh, auto, at least for the beginning part, and we're going to have to manual a little bit just to get ourselves in sync slightly here. Um, it doesn't take a lot to do that, but it is something that we're going to need to do just a little bit here. Get that going, and then with him, we're going to A1, and we're going to just set up a little bit more. I want to make sure I get the counterattack at the right time, get Draco going. Everybody else is going the way they should be, and you're going to see right here, there goes the block debuffs. We're gonna put up now the taunt ability right here. You can see that going up and A1 with Martyr and now we're all set. And you should see, he's last in the turn order. Um, he should not be taking the stun, but he is because of that taunt skill. And so that's what's gonna be helpful. If you have a bunch of champions that you know can't take that taunt, this then becomes a great way to guide where the stun goes from the clan boss, right? And help optimize your team. But the real question is, what kind of raw damage is he doing to justify that? Is he going to be a damage dealer that's going to benefit your team significantly? I'm skeptical of that. You saw he did about 86,000 with that A1 skill. I mean, he's built pretty decently, but that's like half the damage that Martyr's doing right there. That's not significant enough to really justify me bringing him into my team over somebody else that could do more damage. It, for your team, he might be what you need, but I mean, I've got him with 250 crit rate, 4,000 defense. He's not in a bad spot effectively. The, one of the other things we gotta remember though, that taunt skill, it is not an attack. So you are missing an attack out of that as well. So definitely he's okay, but he's not bringing the crazy, crazy damage that I would love to see. I mean, you can see there, uh, some of these really good damage dealers like Martyr, like Hellcat, they're going to be doing about twice as much damage as Ruark is on his own. Um, and so it's just a little bit, a little bit different as far as like the damage output that we're going to be getting from him, which is less than ideal, unfortunately. Um, still good champion, I think, and still is going to be really useful depending on where you have him, right? That decrease attack is very valuable to have when you're running a traditional team. The taunt can be as well, and it is a two-turn duration, which makes it a lot more viable in this game. The strengthen is nice, the increased defense is nice. You're just gonna have to kind of, you know, bear with it, unfortunately. The four-turn cooldown is what kills me, the lack of damage is what kills me. It makes this guy not really that fabulous for a legendary champion. Useful, yes, great, not really. But anyway, let's go ahead, we'll watch the run, we'll see where we get to, we'll jump towards the end and uh, see what kind of damage output we get from him.
Okay, there we go. 78 million is not a bad result at all. I mean, this is less than I usually do, right? It's usually like an 80, 90. I think on Void, we usually do 90, 90 plus uh, million on this. So it's definitely a drop down. And if you look at the damage, Ruark only did 9.2 million. So he's definitely not a heavy damage dealer. Uh, you know, not a whole lot less than somebody like Martyr or Underpriest Brogni or even Hellcat. So it's not like he can't deal any damage, but he's definitely not a top and damage dealing champion like those others and so that's definitely going to be a limitation to his kit right um you know one of the things that you know we're always looking at is doing damage and if you can't do damage not super super helpful but because of the utility with that taunt skill if you can fully utilize that i actually see ruark being very helpful for your team especially if you run a traditional team right when you have ruark in there being able to take the stun you don't have to worry as much about things like bringing ally protection in or, uh, you know, even like massive shields. You can have him really tank that for you and allows you to bring in some other champions that you might not use otherwise. It also allows you to bring in somebody, you know, uh, like maybe like a Broodlord who has a single target ally protection, right? And you can have him target Ruark because you know exactly who's going to be taking the stun. And with his really nice defensive-based aura, you can actually have Ruark in the lead and be very, very successful with that. I didn't do that this time, just so we could show off that taunt ability of his. But clearly, there's some usage here for the champion. Is he going to be great? No, I don't think so. But he's going to be extremely helpful for some of you out there with the teams that you're building. So something to kind of keep in mind as you're going through this, it does make you know preparing for the stun a lot easier on your account because that sometimes is one of the biggest things is, who takes a stun? How do we deal with that? Well, if you know Ruark's taking the stun, you can build a team around that, and it makes it a lot easier to, you know, focus everything else, right? And make sure that your team is working as smoothly as possible. So, of course, I do want to show Ruark's stats and skills and stuff. I'm not going to showcase everybody on this team. This is a team I just run generally. It's not really all that, you know, vital to being able to see. And I did show the total stats earlier. If you want to go back and pause the video, you can check it out there and understand exactly where the stats are on these champions as a comparison basis. Now, as far as Ruark goes, he's got 4,600 defense, which at this speed is pretty good because he's going 241 speed. So being able to keep that level of defense up with that speed is not easy to do. He has a solid base defense, right? It's not that crazy, but, you know, that's his damage stat. And I think that's a pretty good number considering how fast we have him going. 257 crit damage is excellent, I think, uh, with that 100% crit rate. So there's a lot here that's really good. I did not build any accuracy on him. He's not going to be doing any debuffs on this particular build. If you need, of course, a decrease attack debuff, that's what you would want to add into him. Um, and so overall, I would say he's okay, right? He's a pretty decent damage dealer. Now, he's got a lot less defense than Martyr and Hellcat, so obviously he's not going to do the same kind of damage as them, um, even if his crit damage is, you know, also considerably less, actually, now that I think about it. Um, so I don't expect him to do as much damage, but... I'll be honest, with these kind of stats, I was expecting a little bit better damage numbers from him. He's not awful by any means, shape, or form, um, but I don't think that he is quite on the level of those other champions as far as damage dealing goes. So that's kind of the limitation with him, and because he's on a four-turn cooldown, you are going to have to build him fast for most teams. That's the hard part, too. He does need to be on that 4-3 ratio, which makes him a little bit more difficult to use. Okay, I figured I'd take uh, Ruark and martyr into dragon and i have them with about about the same uh crit damage and uh defense levels right it's about the same um so i figured this would be a good chance for us to see exactly what kind of damage we do so we'll start with the a2 from ruark his big hit see what he can do it's aoe we're talking about 20 to thirty thousand across the board if we do the a3 here from martyr her big hit let's see it's going to be yeah 30 to 40, 45,000 uh, across the board there. So a little bit different, a uh, little bit different there. But still, you can see it's fairly effective, right, as far as going across. Um, and that's kind of what I wanted to show. You can take the A1 here and see what that does. We'll take this guy on. Boom, 25,000. It's not too shabby. A1 from Martyr. Boom, 38,000. So this is kind of the big difference, right? You can see he does considerably less damage than Martyr. Um, and that is definitely going to be a bit of a negative, you know, as far as this goes. There's just no, no two ways about it. It's just not going to be the same damage dealer as some of these other champions. So in that previous example with the dragon, I had them both about 
270, 275, 280 crit damage and about 53, 5400 defense. So the numbers are pretty even across the board. There's maybe a slight difference here and there, but nothing that's going to account for that near double damage that Martyr does with their A1 as a composed as compared to Ruark. So that's definitely the negative with them. The positive, obviously, the buffs, that taunt ability is really nice. There is some good stuff in this kit. It's not enough for me to be really excited about him, but I would be disappointed if I pulled him. I think this is a champion that can definitely be used and used in a few different areas, and I'd be interested to see how effective he is in something like Hydra, which I think is going to be a better spot for him. I don't think Taunt is going to be that amazing for Hydra anyway, so it's not like it's a game changer, but he's someone that can be useful, and since we need so many more champions for that part of the game, he becomes a lot more playable there, and I think that's where he's going to be more helpful. So, you know, Take it as you will, but he's definitely going to be better the lower level account you are. Um, the higher end, he's probably not going to be used at all. But in the lower level accounts, I feel like he's going to be really, really valuable. So I did try him in Arena, by the way, and he just wasn't very good. Just wasn't very good taunts. I, like I said, is not very helpful in Arena. There's just no two ways about it. Um, not being able to limit the skills just kind of really, really limits its effectiveness, unfortunately. But... You know, other than that, I thought it was a pretty, pretty darn good, uh, pretty decent little champion, you know, and I think he can be used for a few different, well, for Clan Boss, certainly. So if you have the right team for him, I think you'll enjoy it. Anyway, that's the video for today, guys. Thank you so much for sticking around. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell. Until next we meet, I'm the Deadwood Jedi. Yes.